A few years back, I was teaching gravity to high school students. The way I usually start is I warm them up by asking them questions like, what keeps our galaxy together? What keeps the stars together? And then I jump to the main topic. Now, bear with me, this is not a physics class, but I want to give you some context. So the main topic is the universal law of gravity, which basically says that any object will attract every other object in this universe with a force inversely proportional to one over the distance squared. End of context, that's it. And then we would go on to learn more about what that formula means and draw graphs and solve more numericals and blah, blah, blah. After the class, one student came to me and asked, sir, where exactly is this applicable? Now, whenever somebody used to ask me this question, like where are these things applicable? I used to always feel shaky because maybe deep down I didn't really have an answer for it. My answers used to be mostly like, hey, this is applicable for us, you know, it helps us in building um, rockets, it helps us in building how our universe is formed and blah, blah, blah. But if you think about it, where is it applicable in that kid's life? But I didn't really have a solid answer until now. Today, I have a very solid answer for where this would be applicable, but I need to spend some time explaining what that is, okay? I've taught gravity millions of times, and in all of these classes, I have told them what the law of gravity is, that the force is one over distance squared. Now, this piece of information, that piece of information itself will not be applicable to you in the real life. And the reason for that is because this piece of information is only useful if you're trying to calculate like, you know, the orbits of the planets, or if you want to understand like, you know, how the galaxy, how the stars or all of those things, like the celestial things. But why would you want to try and understand that in detail in your normal life? So you don't want to understand that. So this law of gravity would not be useful for you, okay? so. You might think that most science concepts are not useful to you, but here's the thing, okay? Science is not about knowing the laws of gravity. It's not even about understanding the formula. You know what true science is about? Science is about figuring out how to arrive at that formula. And just think about it, okay? How can you sit here in a room and figure out that everything in the universe attracts everything else? How do you, how can you say that? How can you claim that? And not just that, that you also know that the force dies out as one over distance squared. How in the world <laughs> would you know that, right? That part is what science is. And look at what I did in my class, like all the classes where I took this chapter of gravity, I taught this chapter of gravity, I completely neglected that process through which humanity went through in trying to figure out the laws of gravity, I completely neglected that and directly gave them the answer. And therefore, I did not teach them science. I just taught them the outcome of science. That outcome of science may not be useful to you, but it's the science figuring out that is useful. And you might say at this point, Mahesh, that's all nice and this is great, inspiring stuff, but Humanity took hundreds of years, thousands maybe, to actually achieve this. And how can we expect the kids to do it in a span of few days, right? And I think that's where the teachers come in. This is our ultimate challenge, to balance out instruction and discovery so that we train their brains to think. Now I'm sure you must be wondering, Mahesh, how would you reteach gravity now? Well, disclaimer, I haven't taught yet, okay? But this is what I wanna do. I wanna sort of like just share my ideas wherever I haven't taught yet. And I wanna learn with you. I want to hear your comments and, and I hope we all grow together. We all learn together, all right? It all starts by making an observation first, right? And then figuring out some patterns. When it comes to gravity, it was Kepler who made observations about the positions of the planet and he did that over the span of 10 years and he figured out the planets followed three very specific rules which you call today as Kepler's laws and this is included in their curriculum. I would start there and I think most textbooks also start over there. I would definitely not ask them to do the observations, of course, that's, that's gonna be time consuming but this is the part where I do the instruction. I just tell them, take Kepler's laws for granted, it's there. Now, from Kepler's laws, you can rediscover Newton's laws of gravity. In fact, if you look at the Kepler's second law, the second law says that the planets go around the sun in such a way that they sweep equal areas in equal time. And I, and I would start there and ask, why do planets do that? Why would they obey this very odd, peculiar rule? All the planets obey that, why would they do that? You guess what, students, 
have all the tools that they need. They can use the idea of angular momentum and torque. All of that will be taught to them. They can use that and finally rediscover the fact that that can only happen if the force um, on the earth and all the planets were towards the sun. This is how humanity figured out that the sun is attracting. Before that, we didn't know that sun was attracting all the planets. I mean, how would you know that? Just by looking at the planets going around, how would one know that sun is the one that's attracting them, right? But it was this law that helped humanity, and this is the part where you can do re rediscovery. Then there's Kepler's third law. Again, we'll not get into the details, but you can use this law and do some algebra, which our students will know, to figure out that the force must die out as one over the distance squared. And in fact, you can also compare the rate at which uh, apple falls down and the rate at which moon falls down. <laughs> moon is also falling down. You can look at that and also confirm that the force dies out as one over distance squared. And the best way to do that is by forming small groups, asking each group to come up with some explanation for why they're seeing the Kepler's laws, using the tools that they've already learned. And once we have multiple explanations, we can try to be a skeptic and try to figure out what's wrong with each one of them. The whole idea behind science is to come up with the guesswork and then be a skeptic and try to disprove it. And while doing that, you will learn some new insights. Don't you think this will be an amazing, rich discussion that the students will be having? Guess where this will be applicable in the real life. I'll give you two examples. One is investing in stocks. You have to do the exact same thing. You have to make observations and figure out what patterns are and then make create some explanation for why you are buying or why you want to invest in stocks. You have to go beyond the graphs that they, you see for the stock price, right? Taking the calculated risk. This is a direct application of scientific thinking, not uh, the law of gravity, but the scientific thing that went behind it. And the same applies to deciding whether you want to rent or buy a house, or you want to switch careers, which job you have to take, everywhere you can apply it. But another place where you can apply it is in your relationships. I'm not joking. Like how do you know whether your partner is angry with you because of something that you did today or something that you spoke 10 days back? Scientific thinking, my friends. <laughs> so what's the actionable insight here? For teachers, when you consider all your concepts, Try to understand the history behind it. Try to think about how did we re how did we discover it in the first place, and try to see how can you create learning journeys in which you can make your kids rediscover. And it will be fine if you don't get it right. Don't be afraid to experiment. And if you're a student, then what you can do is you can go and pester your student, pester your teachers, and ask. But how did we know this? How did we realize that this is true? And you can do that in any subject for that matter. For example, we know photosynthesis, uh, you know, leaves take up, you know, plants and trees take up carbon dioxide and they give out oxygen. How do we know that? Like these are invisible things. Ask, be curious about how did we figure things out? It's when you get curious about these things, you will invoke your higher order thinking skills and you'll be able to learn critical thinking. So I'm really curious to hear what you think about this.